Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the Star City Games Modern Open in Louisville, part of the SCG Tour, brought to you by Ultimate Guard and Okie Dokie Dice. I'm Nick Miller alongside Players Championship hopeful Edgar Magalhães. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on. And now, you're the amulet guy. And everyone that you know follows you or watches you on any podcast or any feature matches know you're the amulet person. I had you on the sideboard years ago talking about the deck when it came back after the, uh, the Summer Bloom ban. Right. Well, you're here again for the next iteration of this deck, and ever since War of the Spark came out, you've been toying around with Karn the Creator, and the great creator. just raving about what it does to Amulet. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, quite what the deck wanted. It's, it's really good at bridging the gap towards Titan. It's good for creating a new toolbox that helps fix a lot of problems that the deck had beforehand. Right, and so we're kind of used to this because this deck can use ancient stirrings to find all its pieces, and this is a new piece that that can find. How does adding Karn and the, the sideboard package to this deck change the layout of the deck, main deck and sideboard? So previously in the main deck, we had a lot of flex slots, some coalition relics or trinket mages. We had hive mind for a couple weeks when prison became big. And basically all of those slots became Karn uh, in the new build of the deck. And uh, in addition to that, we had to sacrifice some of the sideboard space as well in order to incorporate some of the Karn bullets. But overall, I think it creates a positive impact on the deck, giving you access to a lot of answers that you wouldn't otherwise have in game ones. Right, and how are we using Karn in this deck? Obviously, everyone's seen the Mygosynth Lattice lock you out of the game stuff, but are we using it as a threat card? Is it a like a backup plan, or do you just kind of make it up as you go depending on what your draws look like? Yeah, it's really it's really game dependent. One of the biggest things about Karn is that uh, once it hits the battlefield, they need to respect the Mygosynth Lattice uh, problem. Uh, for the entire game until they can take it off the table mm -hmm. and that threat allows you to often do other things instead while they're reacting to the Karn. Um, in a lot of matchups where you're taking more of the control role, it, you are going to find answers, you're going to find your needles, you're going to find your, your Tormont's Crypt and try to just stabilize the battlefield and survive as long as possible until you get to your Titan end game. That's still the plan A of the deck and Karn just helps to bridge the gap in those matchups. Right, uh, I was talking to you last week in New York and you said another thing Karn does it just makes one of your worst matchups a good matchup, and that would be the Harden Scales or right. the Affinity matchups. Yeah, just the, the Stony Silence static ability is just so huge in those matchups. I used to dread playing against all the all the Opal decks, but now with the static, you don't, you don't have to worry about dying to Inkmoth Nexus with a Rapture anymore or getting locked up with Welding Jar out of War Prison, for instance. It's, it's really helpful in those matchups as well. Right, and that's one thing that all these new War of the Spark Planeswalkers have done is not only the abilities are good, the rider text on them often are huge in the matches as well, so you have that. So outside of the Karn in the main deck, we're still doing pretty much the normal amulet thing here. Uh, you've added a Boreal Grazer? Boreal what's, Grazer. what's going on here? Limited All-Star. Uh, Some people are not a fan of this card in Limited, but... No. <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of just like an additional ramp effect, but it's really uh, potent because and I'm only playing one copy, but you can pack for it when you, when you need it. And what it does is when you have Amulet in combination with a Bounce Land and you can pack for a Grazer, you can generate one mana. So it's kind of playing that Elvish Spirit Guide role that we kind of always wanted. And sometimes it gets you from that five to six mana jump that you need on a specific turn. Right, and we're not just putting in basic lands like we are right. in Standard or Limited. We're actually getting to get a, a Bounce Land, make more mana, and then do good things with it. Right, even if you end up down a card, for instance, when you pack for it, because it's like not going to influence the battlefield enough, getting a Titan down a turn earlier is sometimes worth up to four cards, so it's, you don't really mind at all. Right, and one thing this deck does really well is utilize all these extra lands. Uh, the new slot in for this weekend, Academy Ruins, I assume this is going along with the whole Karn package. Right, yeah, it's a, it's a 29th land this weekend. I, I added an additional land to the deck. Part, part of the reason was for Karn, part of the reason was for a Boreal Grazer as well. Just wanted more lands that way. Uh, but with all the random bullets that we have in the sideboard, just being able to use them more than once with the Academy Ruins is, is a huge deal. Right. And sometimes you're just able to lock your opponent out that way. So how has the deck been performing for you with the new build? It's been performing pretty well this week. I, I was winning a lot of Magic Online. Uh, I was beating Tron a lot more than I was because of Karn. Just Karn being able to get Needle and stop their Karn Liberators has been huge in that matchup. And just people 
trying to react to it and, and not being able to effectively do it. This deck's able to play it ahead of curve compared to other Karn decks, and just you get some free wins with the card. It feels like, and I've just been doing really well with it. Right. Are there any like gold fishy things you can do with Karn? Like, how early can you play it and lattice someone? Like Technically, you could lattice someone on turn two if you had the the absolute nuts. But okay, uh, if you have an amulet of bounce land, and then one of either uh, Scout Azusa. Grazer or another amulet, you can play Karn on turn two. And from there, you can threaten to uh, Lattice on turn three or just lock them out with EE, just play a Wormcrawl engine ahead of curve, just depending on the matchup, just getting it down on turn two uh, with those combination of cards or turn three with just one of those cards and nothing else is just. That's huge. pretty good. Yeah. All right, so we'll touch on the sideboard now. Here we have the Karn package first. So you have two extra EEs to go along with the one in the main. Uh, and then we have the bullets. We have the lattice, as we mentioned. Then we have Crucible Worlds, Worm Coil, Pithing Needle, and Walking Ballista, along with the Tormod's Crypt. Right. Is there anything you kind of wanted to get into the stack that you couldn't find room for, or are you just satisfied with this? Yeah, so the, the ones that I tried were like Battered Skull, Chalice of the Void, uh, kind of stole the, the Tron technology and tried to train a sphere. But the, the goal was to get the sideboard, the art, uh, the Karn sideboard as small as possible so that I can make room for real sideboard cards. And these ones felt like the ones that had the highest impact, particularly the ones that cost zero and one mana are huge because they let you interact immediately on the on the four and five mana turns, which is which is a big deal. Being able to Karn and interact immediately, it lets you swing the board stage significantly in your favor. And obviously you're pretty in favor of this, but uh, last week I was talking with your amulet buddy, Matthew Dilks, and he was not as big on what Karn does to the deck due to the sideboard. Right, Have you yeah. found that to be that big of a deal, or are you kind of okay with the sacrifices you take there for what you get in the other matchups? Yeah, personally, I've, I've, been, I've been okay with it. I think that the upside is worth it. There, there is obviously a huge downside having to use close to half of your sideboard to, to devote to the Karn package, and there are certain matchups that are worse because of that, particularly the matchups where Karn isn't that great. If you had extra removal spells or extra counter magic for those matchups, it would be useful. But for me, I, I've been I've been doing better with Karn than without, and we'll see where it goes going forward. Right, Ryan, uh, rounding out the sideboard here, two dismember, two negate. We got the Hornet Queen that seems to always be in there, a Reclamation Sage, and then Emrakul, the Promised End. Uh, these are just kind of extra threats. Yeah, extra threats. Uh, the the Hornet Queen is specifically so that your summoner's packs are still live if your Titans get surgical. Uh, Reclamation Sage for Blood Moon, other problem answers. Uh, Emrakul was just because of the hype for Blue White Control this week. I wanted a, a huge hammer for that matchup. I'm expecting a lot of it this weekend, and uh, Emrakul is really good at shutting that matchup down. Right. Wrapping up, how do you feel the deck is positioned with the new innovations that are happening in Modern with all these new Planeswalkers? Do any of them really affect you that much, or are you kind of just doing what you're doing? No, I'm kind of doing what we're doing. I, I think I'm, for the most part, pretty happy if my opponent's playing a Narset on turn three as opposed to interacting with what I have to do. And uh, Teferi can get a little bit annoying sometimes, and that's part of the reason I went with an Emrakul instead of additional counter magic for the for the control matchups. I think we have to rely on the counter magic a little bit, a little bit less. But uh, for the most part, I think that they got in a little bit worse against Amulet uh, with the way that they're built right now. All right. Well, we're going to be looking to watch this deck this weekend. This is on the list of things to pay attention to. Edgar, you're number nine on the leaderboard right, right. now, so you're hoping for a big weekend here in your format uh, with your deck. So, Edgar, wish you the best of Thank luck you. here today Appreciate and this weekend. It. Stay tuned to Star City Games all weekend long for the action here in Louisville.